if I told you that there was a committee whose task it was to suggest amendments to Article 2 of the bylaws of the Unitarian Universalist Association, you might yawn. Bylaw amendments, oh, tiresome, tiresome and tedious, right? But if you know the bylaws of the Unitarian Universalist Association, and I know that many of you out there do, you know that Article 2 is a special part of our bylaws. Because Article 2 is the purposes of the association, the principles of our association, the sources from which we draw our living tradition and our statement of inclusion. And editing those, revising those, amending those is a big deal. It is a big deal. And it asks us to ask the question, what is the permanent in Unitarian Universalism and what is the transient? If you know your history of those principles, you'll know that the principles that we currently affirm and promote as a congregation date back to 1986. The principles themselves have not been changed since. The sources a few times, um, most notably to add the sixth source of earth-centered traditions, but also more recently, to change our source of prophetic women and men to prophetic people, understanding that people come in more varieties than just women and men. It was a good change, and it gets at some of the things I want to talk about today. We changed those words, women and men, to people because we understood something about humanity differently than we did when we first wrote those words. We understood something different enough that it called us to change a foundational part of who we are as Unitarian Universalists, the sources from which we draw our faith. And it is possible, probable even, that the Article 2 Commission that is so hard at work studying and listening and, and thinking about our principles will suggest changes to those principles as well, those principles that have remained unchanged for 35 years. Now, a lot of people are really attached to those principles. I know I am. I became a Unitarian Universalist after they were passed. They, were, they are the only principles that I know are faith to covenant to affirm and promote. And yet, and yet we understand as a faith that we understand things differently, that part of our call is to be a living tradition, that we are not stuck in one way of looking at things, one way of experience in the world, one way of understanding human experience, one way of thinking about justice. And there have been some really good critiques of the principles, the words that are in there that might not have stood the test of time, and also the words that are absent from those principles. Most notably, CLF members will know because our congregation voted at its annual meeting last year to affirm and promote an eighth principle. The eighth principle as it has been promote, pr proposed asks us to insert language that, that makes foundational to our faith the accountable use of power and dismantling oppressions that are based in the misuse of power in our world. It names very clearly that our spiritual wholeness depends on dismantling inequities and misuses and abuses of power in our midst. And the only way we can do that is with accountability to those who have less institutional power. That concept is not in our current principles and many have called for it to be. Whether it comes with the exact words of the eighth principle as it's been proposed or in some other way, I can be fairly certain that that concept will make its way into our principles. Many have also noted that there are things, other things missing from our principles as well. 
they've noted, for example, that the word justice appears in those principles twice. Yay us, justice and justice, we've got that twice in there, but the word love does not appear even once in the principles of the Unitarian Universalist Association. And I think it's not a really controversial thing to say that foundational to our sense of who we are in the world and how we want to shape this world and how we want to be in community with one another, that foundational to that is the concept of love. I, 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 don't, I hope that's not terribly controversial in this community or elsewhere. One of the things that is permanent, I believe, about Unitarian Universalism, one of the things that is a permanent part of who we are, who we claim to be, and who we always will be, is that we understand that change is a part of our spiritual journey. That every time we encounter someone, every time we listen to someone, every time we hear about someone else's experience, we are changed as a result of that. And so if we think that our principles, Article 2 of the Unitarian Universalist bylaws shouldn't change, then they are disconnected. They are disconnected from the theology, from the, the, the philosophy that we espouse as people. If we are transformed by being in community with one another, then we must also occasionally transform our principles as well. About 20 years ago, when I was working at UUA headquarters, um, Layla Ibrahim tried to boil down things that she thought were ways that she would explain Unitarian Universalism to others. And the one that sticks in my brain from that time all these years later is that what each of us knows about God is a piece of the truth. I believe that what each of us knows about the holy, about the sacred, about what is most important is a piece of the truth and that none of us alone has access to the entire thing. And so as new people come into our faith and add their piece to our puzzle, we figure out things differently. We understand things differently and we change as a result. It is to me exciting that our principles and sources and purposes and inclusion statement is up for review. It's exciting, but it's also a regular thing. In fact, it's in those bylaws, if you know them, and I know that many of you do, that we review them at least every 15 years. The last review that was undertaken did not, um, did not actually change anything in them because the proposal that was put forward did not pass the General Assembly. I'm hoping that we can do better this time as a faith, that we can be less reactive to understanding that we need to be something different in this world, that we can be more open to new ways of being in the world. But what exactly those principles are going to say is still a mystery. It's still part of a commission that's working and there will be drafts coming out in the months and year to come. There, there will be opportunities for conversation about it. There will be rewriting and revision of the revised and rewritten article two. Um, but you, you have an opportunity to, to think about what it is that is most important to your Unitarian Universalism? What is most important for our faith to live out in the world? What is most important for our congregations to affirm and promote in the work that we do? And you, you have an opportunity, we, we all have an opportunity to give feedback into this process to make those principles something that we can be proud of for the next 30 years or the next 15 maybe, until they are revised and changed again. None of this is written in stone. Revelation is not sealed. And that, that is a permanent part of Unitarian Universalism. May it be so. Blessed be. Mm -hmm.